Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. The middle of February is here. Andy has already worn his Valentine's Day jacket and we're done with that for another year. Until 2017, then we'll bring it back out. Well, this week also <laughs> happens to be Random Acts of Kindness Week, which is nice to go along with Valentine's Day. So, mm. all right guys, Random Acts of Kindness. This is your week to pay for the meal behind you. Uh, but if you're asking us to pre-plan our Random Act of Kindness, <laughs> it's no longer <laughs> random. He's got it. Uh, Okay, instead I challenge you every day to wake up and say, okay, God, whatever you randomly want me to do for other people, be ready. That's better. I like that. You just never know. Also, we're going to introduce you to some Lima pastors who exhibit God's kindness every single day, perhaps with random acts of kindness or other pre-planned ones. Also, it's a recipe week. What are we making today? A portable lunch option that is also healthy. Take a look mm. at that taco salad in a jar. Oh, also, okay. special interview of an upcoming Christian workshop focusing on the topics of depression and anxiety. But first, Mark, today's scripture. It comes from James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Is all day long here on Faith and Friends. We're going to be talking about wisdom. It's part of the 2016 Faith Challenge, and that'll be our focus this week. Certainly, some good stuff there about are we really seeking after wisdom, or is it just knowledge that maybe accomplishes our, you know, needs here on earth, or the things that we want to see done? Are we using it for good, or are we using it for selfish purposes? And boy, as you turn the proverbs day in and day out, you know, there's what 31 proverbs. One for each day of the month. You, know, you can really learn a lot just by reading the contrast. Okay, this is what I should be doing. This is what I shouldn't be doing. It's pretty black and white. That's right. Godly wisdom, something you'll never, ever regret getting. Well, even though we've had a relatively mild winter so far, this is Ohio, and you never know what is to come. <laughs> the American Red Cross has issued some winter safety tips to keep you safe and your skin protected if you do encounter bitter weather conditions. Wear layers of lightweight clothing to stay warm. Gloves and a hat help prevent losing body heat. Know the signs of hypothermia, confusion, dizziness, exhaustion, severe shivering. These signs require medical attention. Watch for symptoms of frostbite, flushed, gray, white, blue, or even yellow skin discoloration, numbness, or waxy feeling skin. Bring pets indoors during bitterly cold at times. Avoid frozen pipes. Run water to trickle to help keep your pipes from freezing. Do not use a stove or an oven to heat the home. Space heater should sit on a level, hard surface away from anything flammable. And if using a fireplace, use a glass or metal fire screen to catch sparks and rolling logs. Finally, turn off space heaters and make sure fireplace embers are out before going to bed. You can learn more about how to treat cold weather related er emergencies by visiting redcross.org. As we continue with our theme of knowledge, how about some knowledge about treating depression and anxiety? That's something that can affect individuals not just during the winter months, but all year round. Jennifer is with Carrie Taylor of Cornerstone of Hope to discuss an upcoming workshop focusing specifically on those two issues. Jennifer? Thank you, Mark. Well, if it doesn't affect you personally, then it is likely that it does or has affected someone you know and love well. Anxiety and depression are two of the most common mental illnesses in the United States, and women are twice as likely to be affected than men. Well, next month, a special one-day seminar on how to manage these two issues will take place at Lima Community Church. And here to talk about the issues of depression and anxiety and the upcoming seminar is licensed professional counselor Carrie Taylor of Cornerstone of Hope Lima. Carrie, thank you so much for being with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Well, let's just jump right into these two big topics. Sure. Depression sure. and anxiety. Um, you just mentioned those, and there's a, probably a lot of people out there going, oh yeah, I, I, I get it. Right, both are very, very common. Um, regardless of what you're dealing with in life, at some point you've probably felt some anxiety or even some depression about something. And it doesn't mean that it has to be necessarily even diagnosed as that, but you may go through spurts of it. 
you know, anxiety can come as, you know, sometimes your heart starts racing or you start to feel really nervous around something or it's, it's um, a high stress level on what, what is set up in front of you mm -hmm. and wondering, can I accomplish this? It's excessive worry about things. Uh, it, it shows up in a myriad of different ways, not being able to think clearly, not being able to concentrate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just withdraw because you're so anxious that you don't know what else to do. So you just kind of cave in on yourself, which often looks like depression. Uh, and yes. so depression comes when there's just kind of a, a downward spiral inside of you of your thoughts, you know, where you're just kind of starting to on this negative trend inside, whether it's thoughts about yourself or about everything else, and just kind of starting to feel hopeless, like there's not a way out of this whirlwind that you're in. Um, and sometimes that can cause you to want to sleep more or sleep less, mm -hmm. to eat more, to eat less. And really anxiety and depression pair off of each other. Sometimes people get depressed because they're anxious mm. and so they withdraw and then sometimes people who have depression feel anxious about mm. their depression and they're not sure how to handle it so the two really go hand in hand and um, and really treatment for both of them is very very similar so studies are showing that these are prevalent in the united states oh my goodness yes and absolutely. they are more prevalent among women than they, they are, are. Among men. yes they are that is that is a typical and i think some of the way they are displayed is a little bit more acceptable among women and so it may be shown that it's more uh, although th men do experience it but mm -hmm. sometimes in different ways you know one thing I'm noticing in this area especially is that among teenage girls this is high high in my office I just watch for trends among my clients and just have seen a trend among high school girls and women of this unbelievable anxiety um, a lot of its performance based in schools for the teenagers and mm -hmm. um, they're in so many things that have to do with their performance mm -hmm. you know and and don't get a chance to just say who am I and how am I and how can I handle this and feel okay about myself and so yeah so we recognize that there are definitely some issues um, right. and it's not the type of thing that you can just say snap out of it that's right that's right but there are some solutions and you're offering mm -hmm. a one-day opportunity to help gird these these young girls these teenage girls and women mm -hmm. with some ideas on how to start walking through this that's right that's right a lot of times there's such this um, hopeless feel or almost really a silence to our anxiety mm. or depression where we don't want to talk about it we don't want to admit it to anybody else that it's there and they feel like what is how do I get out of this and there are really practical tools to do that and really God has equipped us um, with them we just don't always realize that we have them mm. and so this workshop will be a really um, practical day where they're going to do some a lot of hands-on experiences a lot of processing right there and then they'll have things to take home with them by the end of the day they will have quite a few practical skills yeah. at their disposal so the workshop is called ladies day of hope managing anxiety and depression it's a one-day workshop from nine to four taking place at lima community church and it's for teen girls ages 15 and up mm -hmm. and for women what is this day going to be like? Well, when, when you come in, you will be in a group. So each the women will be divided into smaller groups, and there will be a professional counselor that's leading each group. And I will do a little bit of intro at each session, and then they will break down into these groups and process that out and do their hands-on activities and really get into what's going on inside and how do we come against that. A lot of battling our thoughts because our mm. thoughts impact what we feel, which impact how we live. Yeah. And if we can get a hold of those, and switch those around, then we, it changes how we, how we live that out. So there'll be those things. Um, we'll do some hands-on activities of some calming activities that really um, help depression and anxiety because it's the thoughts that have to get calmed down mm. so that we can handle it in a more manageable way. So there'll be some hands-on things that they will actually create and take home with them. We'll even be sampling some calming foods. There are certain foods that are more calming than others, and we'll process that and talk about what, what do we put in our bodies that impact this. That's incredible. Yeah. I bet you a lot of people have not thought about that idea of right. foods, calming foods, right. even though we may recognize there are some foods that trigger things. Right. But are there can be foods that calm things too. Absolutely, absolutely. And we want to make sure that we're really well rounding this day so that women understand it's not just your emotions it's also your thoughts it's also mm. what you eat and how you take care of yourself you know and things like that so we really want them to be um, fully equipped by the end of the day and so a woman who has been dealing with this for a significant period of time can <coughs> excuse me can she believe that one day can be the start to something better absolutely absolutely uh, the way they will process and what you find is when you take a day away from everything else mm. and you come and you're willing 
to process something and talk about it and really dive, dive into yourself, you can accomplish a lot in that mm. setting. Um, and it's something that will hopefully trigger everything else to come. And a lot of times we hear a lot of things and we can feel overwhelmed by it in one day, but God often brings those to mind when we need them most. As, as we need them to apply them to our lives. So yes, they will do that. There will also be, um, we'll talk about further counseling if people need that. You know, if women that are there think, this is great and this is giving me a start, but now maybe I need some further counseling, we'll tell them how to get that. You know, and speaking of counseling, we're almost out of time. A woman who's dealing with this can go to a secular counselor, right. but this is taking place at Lima Community Church. You are a Christian. Where does faith fall into all this kind of thing? Huge, huge. I'm a Christian counselor, and so I always integrate faith into my counseling. And there is, there are scripture um, that we're going to use that day that really evidence how God laid out for us how to handle our anxiety in amazing ways. And part of that is even how He's made our bodies, how He's equipped our brains. Um, and we will talk about that all through the day about how He has He has designed us in such a way that we don't have to live mm. with anxiety and depression taking over. Well, that's powerful words. We don't have to live with anxiety and depression taking over. Important things to remember. <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat here, but <clears throat> hear me through this frogginess, such an important topic. And I certainly hope that you think about this seminar that's taking place March 12th from 9 to 4 at Lima Community Church's Journey Building. To register, contact Cornerstone of Hope in Lima. The phone number and the email address are right there on the screen, 419-581-9138, or you can email Micah.Gallagher at cornerstoneofhope.org. Well, serving, helping, making a difference, doing positive things for others, that's important ways to improve your mood in anything you're doing. Well, we want to introduce you to a young man over at Delphus Jefferson who is doing just that as well, serving others in a great way. Here's Matt Finkel. Thanks, Jennifer. Delphus Jefferson's boys basketball postseason begins on February 27th with a sectional final at Van Wert High School. And Wildcats leading scorer Trey Smith continues to wow on the court, achieving milestone after milestone. And even with the postseason looming for the senior, I found out in this week's OIO Faith on the Field segment that basketball is just a part of what makes Smith who he is. It's always God first, family second, schoolwork third. Family school work probably about even with second, and then it's sports. Everything else comes first because ultimately in life, basketball is just a part-time thing that helps build characteristics that you're going to need later in life. With his priorities in order, Trey has been able to accomplish some amazing things on the court. He's Delphus Jefferson's all-time leading scorer, and the senior is on pace to surpass the 2,000-point mark. Smith also just became the all-time leading scorer among active high schools in Van Wert County. And all of these achievements are no accident. Trey has been in the gym 365 days a year since he's been in first grade. Just think about what you were doing possibly on May 17th or what you were doing on June 21st or August 20th or, or pick a day. And, and Trey was in the gym. Ultimately, it's a team game. The most important thing is winning. And right now, being at 11-4, and four, we're finding ways to be able to pull games out. We're uh, playing together now. It really seems like we're hitting our stride. And, you know, we're just enjoying it. Smith's work ethic has set a great example for his teammates and the young kids in the Jefferson community. Colleges took notice too. Next year, he will continue his basketball career at the United States Air Force Academy. They were there from the beginning, got my first offer from them, and it just seemed like the perfect fit for how our family lifestyle is and how my personality is, and it just seemed to mold perfectly with everything that the academy is about. In a lot of ways, college ball is not unlike what he's gone through his entire life as far as it's kind of a war of attrition. You know, if you keep battling, 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 you keep working hard, working hard, putting in extra time, and he continues to do all that stuff, you know, the, the benefits will be there at the end. Whether you go to college, whether you go straight into the workforce, or whether you go into the service like I happen to be doing. Everything you do sets you up for the future, so I've just done everything that I can to help prepare myself to be as successful as I can be. With a bright future on the court ahead to go along with an already outstanding past, Trey makes sure his faith comes before everything else. I grew up in, in a church. I've gone to church. I've done our TFC and FCA meetings all through high school, and it, it's just taught me a lot. It's taught me how to be humble. It's taught me how there, there's always a higher being that has things mapped out for you so if things don't happen to not be going well keep your hopes up because everything happens for a reason 
Thank you, Matt. Well, it's time now for our Lost Creek Care Center Stop in the Kitchen, and today we're responding to a request by viewer Jan Richards, who wrote to us requesting that we have a clean eating recipe on our food segment. What is clean eating? Well, in simple terms, it's eating foods in the most natural state where you found them. That means instead of going to the grocery store and buying that boxed item that you might find on the shelves, you're going to buy the natural ingredients Spend a little extra time, put it together, and you will have a clean meal. And today, our clean eating recipe is taco salad in the jar. A natural. We got the state. jars. We got the jars. I, I guess that, and it's clean jar. I would hope so. Arizona is a natural state, right? So we need to go to Arizona to get all of our food. That's the best guacamole I hear. Well, we're going to try our best here in here in Ohio, and we're going to start out with our recipe by making the dressing. You know, even the dressings that you get in the store aren't always filled with the right kind of stuff. So we are going to make a creamy salsa dressing, which we're going to use as a top. All right, guys, here's what you need to do. All right. Mark, I want you to juice that lime. Alrighty. Andy, here is an avocado. Mm. As you can see, it looks dirty and yucky on the outside. That is a sign that it is ready to eat because take a look at the inside. Oh, wow. Beautiful green. And I nice suppose there's design. a biblical lesson in that, that it can look I think yucky and gross on the outside. I have been wanting to write a devotional about that very but same thing. But it's the inside that's what yes. matters. So I need you to take two tablespoons of that avocado and put it right here into our mixing bowl. Mark, when you've got the lime juice, go ahead and put that in oh, our mixing it's really bowl. Soft. Well, yeah, that's why you want to have the soft avocado when you purchase it from the store. That's why it's Where ready, put in this? ready yes. to go. Yep, put it right in there. Just two tablespoons of that. So we're putting in um, two tablespoons of ripe mashed avocado, juice of one lime, a quarter cup salsa. Go ahead and grab that salsa. And then two tablespoons of plain Greek yogurt. Oh, I thought that was sour cream. Oh, no, 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 it's not. It is Greek yogurt. This is the dressing that is optional that we're going to put on the top of our taco in a jar. Put the lid on here. And then... I'm going to ninja it up. You go ahead. Just press the top. All right. There we go. Our dressing is done. Wow. We'll that was the, quick and easy. We'll set that aside, and we'll come back to that well, we a little bit later. Okay. Time now to assemble our taco salad in a jar. And here are the ingredients that we have. Fat, half a pound of ground turkey. Your sheet says turkey. skinny taco salad, I would like it to does. know. It does. I have removed the word skinny simply because we have chosen to use beef, and some people will say oh. that that adds more, more oh. fat in. Okay. But um, I think you can do this either with turkey or ground beef. So we've got beef, and then take a look. Instead of just going to the store and buying the packaged taco seasoning, we added in a teaspoon of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of cumin, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and sea salt. And we just put all of those spices in, and you've got the items you need. Got some extra items as well. We've got three cups of romaine lettuce, half a cup tortilla chips broken up, half a cup of cheddar cheese, one cup of halved cherry tomatoes, and then we also have a half a cup of salsa. Okay, guys, so now we just simply need to assemble this. Took probably about 10 minutes time to actually get the ingredients ready. This is something you want to do ahead of time. You're going to use this for lunches, possibly for the next couple days. So you shouldn't do this for your home TV segment? Well, certainly you can do this at home too. Oh, okay. But if you need a healthy lunch on the go, this could be a healthy option for you. All right, guys, to so make your salad, first take the tortilla chips and divide them between the two jars. We're just going to layer things now. Do the chips get soggy when you put them at the bottom? Well, no, actually, because the lettuce is going oh, to protect them. Okay. See, Mark is, Mark is being a very giving person. Look, he gave you extra. More? Thank you, Mark. Well, what can I say? <laughs> All right, next lettuce? step, layer, oh, layer with half the cheese. Half the cheese. So this is cheddar cheese. Um, if you buy the taco seasoning cheese in the store, again, you never really know what kind of seasonings you're getting into it. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can pick things in the natural state, the better. Next, it's the lettuce. Half the lettuce goes in each of the jars. The guys did wash their hands. Don't worry, I made sure that they would because I told them they'd be handling the food. To answer your question, the lettuce is protecting the chips from is getting really? soggy. So here, do you need to use all the lettuce? Yep, you okay. want to put each, you want to do half the lettuce in there. Go ahead and stuff it down. You can get a lot of stuff in there. Um, lettuce, of course, contains a lot of a water. Candy. It's a low carb um, thing that you can eat. And this is romaine lettuce that we are using. How are you doing, guys? Did you taste it already? Cheese. You did. 
Okay, coming up next, it's time for the meat mixture. So half of the meat mixture what makes goes. It a mixture? Did well, because we put the seasoning in it. Oh, the seasoning, I got you. What was yes. last thing? You want me to pour it? Yes. So as you can see, we, possibly you might want to have a funnel when you are doing this kind or of thing. Or wider jars. Well, those are wide mouth hands. jars. Pam's not going to be happy with me. Actually, what did I get? Messy. You've got a wide mouth jar. Maybe you don't have a wide mouth jar. All right. Push it on. There actually are devices that you can get that would, um, you can press things down. You can get kind of a masher that doesn't mash the food. So that's another option. Next, you need the tomatoes, cherry tomatoes on top. There you go. Thank you. Now you can see Mark is being, mm. Mark is not taking half. You don't have to. You can make this exactly the way that you'd like. Maybe you like more meat. Maybe you like more vegetables. Or less cherry tomatoes. Yeah, less cherry tomatoes. cherry tomatoes. That's true. Hey, this is perfect. So They're now making lunch for me. What about the salsa? Next will last? be the salsa and the avocado dressing. Yep, those are last. Because mm. if you think about it, do you want the wet stuff at the bottom next to the, cor the corn chips? I thought we were making guacamole. Not today. Would you guys like to see us make guacamole? We responded to Jan Richards' request for a clean recipe. Maybe you want to tell us what you'd like to see. Now we're adding that um, avocado dressing Creamy. on the top, which is an optional thing. Some people don't like the dressing. If you are trying to make it as healthful as possible, then the dressing might be the thing you're going to pull off. Okay, guys, you want to put lids on. I guess I've got... Thank you. That's awesome. Seal it tightly. Put it in the refrigerator. It should stay good for a couple days, so you want to consume it within a couple days. But when you're ready, all you have to do is take your jar, dump it out. Don't you want to shake it up a little bit, get some of that nope. dressing all around it? Not uh -oh. yet. Uh, too late. Not yet. Not if you're, well, if you're going to eat it first, yes. But if you're going to wait for a couple days, leave it just the way it is. How many days can you unshake and how many days can you leave Only it Only about the two. Because of all the things inside of it, right. yeah, you, you once you, once the wet stuff gets down to the lettuce, you, you want to eat I that. I think the avocado is just one day. Well, that's just for guacamole. Well, avocado, it depends. On, you know, we've actually now changed the avocado a little bit because we've added things into it. Oh, we it. changed it? Chemistry in Chemical the Chemical change? Yeah, that's right. I thought there was no chemistry involved. This is all natural whole foods. Oh. This is godly chemistry. God designed it to work this way. Okay, so here so you go. Days. One to two days, when you're ready to eat this, all you have to do is get your bowl out, pour it into the bowl. You can't just go straight from the jar to your mouth? Well, Isn't you're that the natural state without using the dishes? Get an ice cream spoon. One of those we're going to we're gonna take pictures of the guys gonna gulping it. down their skinny taco in a jar. It's a wide mouth, not skinny. Very good. All right, that is our recipe for that. You know someone else who's a very gifted cook? Her name is Hannah Beck Bowers, and if you got the most recent Take One newsletter, then you recently saw an article about Zach and Hannah and their recent move to Colorado Springs with Zach's uh, recent job with Focus on the Family. Well, Hannah is also a gifted singer and speaker, and not long ago, she spoke at Restoration Temple Church here in Lima, Ohio. Coming up next week and the following week on Faith and Friends, we're going to share with you in two parts that special talk that she did, and now we're going to give you a sneak peek. You see, one of the things, I don't know about you, but I run into is whenever I feel a little shaky in my faith, whenever I feel a little bit uncertain, a lot of times it can go back to that. Not recognizing that God chose me. And he chose me to be his child and his subject. And all throughout scripture, he reminds us of that. That at the very base, before the world and the foundations of the world were laid, he chose us to be his children. It's not that we went out and said, okay, God, I pick you today. No, he knew us before the world was made. Well, February is Black History Month, and while we are thankful for pastors all year long, we're taking some time this month to say thank you to some of our local pastors who are making such a positive difference and making history right now by the things they do every single day. This week, we are thanking pastors Darnell and Charlene Williams and Pastor Carl Johnson, all of New Life Church International. New Life Church International, located on the corner of Cole and High Streets here in Lima. They're a multicultural church that desires to reach out to all ages, training up leaders in Christ. Pastor Carl specifically has a heart to reach the youth and all three pastors, evangelism, discipleship, and the ministry of compassion. Pastor Charlene recently published the devotional book 31. We have a copy of it right here. Prayers that move the hand of God 
And she and Darnell are both popular speakers at conferences and at events. Darnell also a chaplain on the police force. TV44, thankful today for the ministry of Pastor Darnell and Charlene Williams and Pastor Carl Johnson at New Life Church International. There are just a few of so many incredible pastors mm. that we have. I think every week we could be thanking a new set of pastors or a new church. So many wonderful things that are happening in our community. And we are thankful and we pray for you, pastors, because we know that your calling is not always easy. Mm. Well, something that I believe all three of those pastors we just mentioned from New Life Exhibit is the desire to attain godly knowledge. The 2016 Faith Challenge continues this week, and our focus remains on the topic of knowledge. But you know, Knowledge is available anywhere. Mm -hmm. People get master's degrees and PhDs and mm -hmm. all kinds of knowledge, but how do we find the knowledge that God is telling us that we need? Well, I'd say the answer is found in the Bible. There is so much you can find in the Word of God about knowledge. And, you know, there's also certainly a lot of false knowledge out there as well, and that's nothing new either. Uh, it can be found in the Word as well. Second Peter chapter 2 talks about false teachings and false prophets and how we can discern uh, knowledge in, in false teachings. And you even go back to when Jesus was tempted in the, uh, the desert. It was Satan who was twisting the words of God to try and tempt Jesus. So those false prophets, those, that false knowledge has been there from the beginning. In fact, the serpent used false knowledge to trick Adam and Eve, go, leading to the original sin. So that has always been there, and it, the Word has always provided answers for us to finding the truth. And, and I think that's why it's so important to be in your Bible every day, to have a, a strong Bible and be familiar with your Bible and how you can find information. That's why concordances are so important for your Bible. It's so mm -hmm. important to, to get that knowledge and to have it and to internalize it, but then to put it into practice. And that true wisdom where we're helping others with the knowledge we gain from Scripture, where we can be uh, the hands and feet of Jesus. It also can be helpful to have a community, a, a trustworthy community, that's going to be helping you walk in the right direction. So if you, if you read something or you hear something or someone else says something to you and you're not sure if that's lining up with God's Word, you could have that faithful, trustworthy companion, person that you can talk to, and that person will go to God and pray for you as well and to help you discern what God is really calling you to do. Well, we want to be that for you as well, and we encourage you to join the 2016 Faith Challenge by returning the reply card found in this month's newsletter, or simply by emailing us at faithandfriends at wtlw.com. Now, if you don't get our newsletter, then be sure to sign up. You can get on the list by going to wtlw.com or calling us at 419-339-4444. Now, this is the last week to sign up to win it. Two tickets to hear Luke Zamperini. Luke will be at the Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert on March the 6th. Second giveaway is tickets for two to hear Natalie Grant. Contemporary Christian singer will also be at Nice Swanger in March, the 20th of March. Our third giveaway is a set of books written by Natalie Grant, aimed for teenage and preteen girls. To sign up, just go to our website, faithandfriends at wtlw.com. Click on contest, enter the requested information, indicate which contest you are entering. Drawing for the Luke Zamperini tickets will be at the end of this week, while the drawing for the Natalie Grant items will be on March the 11th. And you're going to be at that Natalie Grant concert, aren't you? My wife is so excited to see Natalie Grant. It's one of her favorites. I'm excited too. It should be a good night. Yeah. All right. Well, we are out of time for today's show, but let's take one final look at our scripture. James 3, 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Just something to remember as you are going through maybe your own areas of disorder. Disorder is not from God. God can provide peace in even the most difficult and confusing situations. That's all we have time, all the time we have for us this week on Faith and Friends. We pray that you have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.